Hey guys, let's kick an old school intro. It's Kenny Mack from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. I'm also a diehard dog pack member. So I want to hear what my dog's got to say. Let's go brownies. Woo, woo, woo. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Zach Kopp, Justin Charles, and Josh All. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast. If you want to get your intro on the show, head to thedogspodcast.com, tap leave voicemail in the drop down menu. You can leave a voicemail, an intro, get your thoughts on the show. Um, we just want to hear from you, any, anything you got to say. Uh, today, we're going to get into some of the current roster situations on the Browns. Plus, we just wrapped up an interview with Brown Safety D'Anthony Bell. It's going to be at the end of this episode. Make sure you stick around. It was awesome. He's an awesome guy to talk to. Um, our very first ever player interview. Super pumped to have him on the show. So make sure you guys stick around for that. It's going to be at the end of this episode. Before we get into everything, though, make sure you check us out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. You can also find us on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Lastly, head to jointhedogs.com to become an official Dog Pack member on our Patreon page. Um, I just ordered a fantasy trophy, finally, for my other league. Uh, we're getting closer <laughs> to fantasy football leagues again. Like I said on previous episodes, we had two leagues last year. It'd be awesome to have more leagues than that this year. Uh, so if... You want some free Browns merch? Jump in to the Patreon, win a fantasy league, get yourself some free dogs merch. Um, we got threads going on there. You know, anytime I get a Browns thought, I jump in there and make a thread. Everybody talks about it. Um, you get an extra episode every week. It's just a ton of fun for everybody. You heard Kenny Mack in the intro say, uh, intro say he's a member. We got guys out in Scotland who are members, um, people out in San Diego. So it's a global Browns backers club on the internet where it's 24 seven Browns content. So if that interests you head to join the dogs.com, become an official dog pack member. So I read this morning, Mary Kay Cabot reporting the Browns are unlikely to sign Jarvis. Um, and they're unlikely to really sign anybody. Uh, they're saying that they're happy with the receiving core in its current form. Um, and that's what they're going to roll with. What do you, what are you guys thoughts on that? I mean, my initial thought is I, they must, they must have a lot of confidence in the progression of Anthony Schwartz from last year, third round pick. I mean, he's got the speed. We know he's got the straight line speed. It was just kind of the route running and obviously the catching. And the knowledge, just like, mm -hmm. it's like he didn't understand the quarterback could throw far. But he, <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, coming out of college last year, I did think that he was almost a reach when the Browns took him, but they took him for a reason, and I do trust in A.B. And I think he was like, was he 20 last year when he came out? 2021? He's, he was young. He's, he's super very young. young. So I, I think I, what you're saying about the knowledge makes sense. You know, he's, he's just not football mature at the NFL level yet. And it, he was only a rookie. Yeah. And to me, you, like you said, it, it maybe felt like a little bit of a reach. To me, it was a luxury pick. Are yeah. the, we thought the roster was stacked last year. And it was one of those things like, could, is it a reach to take him now? Yes. But do we want to take the chance of him not being there in the fourth? And it was like, well, the roster's already stacked. So let's just go get our guy. Almost like a Cade York situation yeah. this year. Mm -hmm. you know, could we have waited to the fifth or the sixth to draft a kicker? Maybe. But why? If the roster's set and you like where you're at, go get your guy. And if that's the one that you want, go and, get and you've pegged him as the guy that can fill that role, then don't let somebody else just sneak in there and get him. Go get him. So at first impression, I go, ah, man, that sucks. Because mm -hmm. I love Jarvis. Yeah. So important to what we did last couple of years. Last, what, four years. But I look at like the depth chart and I go, well, Mari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, David Bell, Anthony Swartz. I'm like... This is Deshaun Watson throwing to these guys. That's right. So That's right. I'm I'm not that concerned. And like even our like, you know, practice squad guys like a Jamarcus Bradley, we picked up Jakeem Grant. I think he's gonna be more special teams, but I'm not I'm not even really that upset. Like I'm kinda like, oh well, hey, that chapter's closed. I'm upset that I won't be able to wear a Jarvis Landry jersey anymore <laughs> to the games. But that's about it for me. Like I don't see this as a panic thing. And then you're probably going to have to pay pretty decent money still. I'm thinking he's not going to come here for less than, what, $10 million maybe or something like that? No, I mean, I he wanted 15 to 20 so I don't see – and the market's not really there no, either for him. But. And we talked a lot last year, too, about Demetric Felton being able to fill that slot in, role yeah. if we need him to. And yep. then, I mean, we just drafted Jerome Ford at mm -hmm. running back, so maybe that allows Felton to move more into that receiving role. Plus, yeah. we got to remember, you got Kareem Hunt out of the backfield. We've got yep. David Njoku. Yep. Um, Harrison Bryant. And the receiving options for Deshaun Watson are, we're good. 
Yeah, we're okay. not limited. No. I, I feel mm-hmm. like it's completely fine. Yeah, stable situation. And I think David Bell's a much better. I think he's a better pick than what maybe he was valued at in the draft. Keep going, bro. You know, I, I think you're a hundred percent right. I think his versatility inside, outside receiver, his route running. Yes. I don't care about the forty speed. We talked about that last no. week. It doesn't matter. No, and I I think. I think this is the Browns' way of saying they think some of these second-year guys are going to make yeah. a leap. Mm-hmm. Felton, I think they're expecting more out of Felton, more out of Schwartz, like you yep. said. Yes. Um, and I think they also are putting stock in the fact that we have a quarterback now who's going to elevate these guys. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I think, to me, this tells me they thought more of the receiving problems last year were more on the quarterback than it was on the receiving room. You know, I'm not taking, I'm not trying to take a shot at anybody here, but it just, to me, they, they're going, we got a quarterback now who's going to elevate this room. Yeah, when you, you've said many times that – Deshaun Watson also is very much going to help Nick Chubb Everybody. in that running game. Everybody. I mean, it's mm-hmm. insane. Yeah. So that's going to help get receivers open just in its own right. Yep. Yeah, oh, for sure. I think the offense this year has a chance to just be so explosive. <laughs> a uh, chance? Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's got a pretty good possibility here. So, um, again, to not getting Jarvis back for me is more of like a personal. Yeah. It's sad because he's just one of my favorite Browns players ever. Oh, yeah. But yeah. as far as on the field, like you, you mentioned David Bell. I watched Building the Browns uh, episode three last mm-hmm. night. I've never seen Kevin Stefanski be as excited for a player as he was when he was talking to David Bell. Stefanski's usually like, a, we're going to get to work. He's almost robotic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now when he was talking, I mean, he, he told David Bell to his face, I you were the first guy I watched, and I told Andrew Barry we had to have you. R- really? See, I didn't, I didn't see the episode. Yeah. He, huh. I've never seen Stefanski that excited about a player in his you know going on third year being here. He's always so like pragmatic and robotic. Mm-hmm. Oh and, yeah, you can't read his emotions one way or the other. No, he one on one conversation. He told him straight to his face, "You were the first person I watched, and I told Andrew Barry we have to get you." I that, think that makes me feel a whole lot better too about. Oh the yeah, I think David Bell's got a role on this team from the jump. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think this isn't a project like Anthony Schwartz was. I think you're going to see David Bell be probably that number two guy. I think right from the rip. Wow. Over DPJ? Wow. Well, I think DPJ is going to be your stretch guy. Okay. So, okay. Uh, but I think David Bell is going to f- get to play the role that Jarvis Landry never got to play. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's going to get to work that middle of the field. He's going to get to catch some of those quick screen passes because it, Bell's great after the catch. Yeah. So, um, I think you're going to get to see him kind of flourish in that role opposite. I think Cooper and DPJ are going to stretch the field. And with his precise route running and his craftiness, he's just going to dem- – Control the middle of the field with Njoku. Nice thing about uh, Cooper, too, is he can inside outside. Yeah. yeah. You know, so they can, the, the versatility there, not having, you know, receivers that are just pegged at one spot and that's kind of yes. all they're good at, that's going to be really nice. Yeah, and we talked about this last week with Andrew, ba- or, uh, Andrew Barry as opposed to Dorsey. We said Dorsey was just kind of throwing things at the wall, seeing what sticks. Yeah. Look at the versatility that Andrew Barry has drafted now, like you just said. We got guys who can play multiple positions and they can play them both at a high level. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm glad you did that. Uh, this is a little off topic. I'm glad you kind of did that John Dorsey versus uh, Andrew Barry talk because I've heard that from a lot of Browns fans for a long time and it just, it gets so annoying. Did you go <laughs> back and watch it all? Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. We got a fan in Justin when he's oh, right. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, he can't make it, at least yeah, watch I'm it. in the yeah. Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, like I got, I, I think people panicked after the first day because they're so used to having a first round, first night pick. You know what I mean? Got to have that first. We're Cleveland Browns fans. How high, you know, what are, what are we doing with, what would he have done with that 13th? Mm-hmm. Look what he did with just day two and day three picks. Yeah. It's unreal. And Not we, even a second round pick. And you still hear Browns fans just complaining and I just don't get it. People I just don't understand it. Freaking out that we traded back at 44 and he turned that into three guys that I think are going to... St- either start or play extensive minutes right away. Emerson's going to play a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> the, he's going to play a lot. Yep. Bell, I think I just said, he's going to step in and be the number two guy as a rookie. And Alex Wright, I think we talked about it when we did our draft recap, has flown under the radar this entire mm-hmm. time. That mm-hmm. dude's going to play and he's going to play a lot. Yep. Especially if Clowney doesn't come back. Yeah. I which agree. we're going to get into. But yep. um, no, I mean, and you kind of touched on it last week. You said we traded back because who's to say we didn't have David Bell graded almost the exact same as like a Pickens or a Mechie. Well, and based on what Stefanski said on the episode there. We did. They, we did. Actually, David yeah. Bell might have been ranked higher, higher than those guys. And when they got to 44, they were like, 
yeah, look at all these other receivers that we have ranked below David Bell, and we know he's not going here. Yep. So, it, I mean, Andrew Barry is a genius. Ooh. And so the, like, the comparisons to John Dorsey, one of them is going to probably win executive of the year. The other one is in Detroit and can't keep a job. <laughs> right. Although Detroit did, did have a pretty good draft. They had a great draft. And I love John Dorsey. Don't <laughs> no, get me wrong. I, I, again, I, nothing but respect for the guy. Kind of like a Jarvis Landry laid down the foundation yep. for somebody to take over. Kind of like Baker. Yep. I should say that too. Yeah. Hey, foundation laid. Now we have guys that can take it to the next step that maybe we couldn't have. A hundred percent. Speaking of Clowney, uh, I did see, I think it was Field Yates reported that they're expecting Clowney to sign back with the Browns could be within like the next week or so. Um, I hate that he's dragging it out, but I guess this is just kind of like his personality. Um, I think he, he is... If I had to choose gun to my head, Clowney or Jarvis back on this team, it's got to be Clowney. It's a yeah. that's a much bigger need than receiver is that opposite edge rusher of Miles Garrett. I agree one hundred percent. We already talked about Deshaun Watson elevating the receivers, but we need somebody on the other side of that line for Miles Garrett. And Jadavian Clowney last year was awesome, awesome for the Browns. Yep. I I just think that if that is true, if he is coming back next week, that adds. Um, that takes a lot of questions off the table. Mm -hmm. As far as, I think if you look at the team right now as a roster, you go, not really sure what's going on on that right side. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I think, right, so the depth chart right now has uh, Chase, what, Winovich as that, that's it, who's starting right now. I'd feel a lot better if that was Clowney. Oh, nothing sure. against Nothing against that guy. It's just... No, but the, it adds a lot of depth with pieces. With him and Alex Wright, now the rotation, yeah, rotation you can have yes. with those guys to keep yes. them fresh. Yep. What's oh, what's man. crazy to me is I think the Chase Winovich signing keeps I keep forgetting that we signed him. I yeah. know I do too, and I think uh, he's going to be. We, an, we traded for him. Traded, yeah, Mac traded Wilson. for him, and I, I think I think he's going to be an impact player. For I do us. too. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I think he's going to. I mean, he's never played uh, opposite anybody like Miles Garrett, and we might give Miles Garrett a little bit of flack from he hasn't put a whole sixteen game season together at times. Yep. But when Miles Garrett's at the top of his game, there's. Yep. Very few people in this world who can do what Miles Garrett can do. So I think Chase Winovich is going to be a high impact player opposite him. And like you said, if we put Alex Wright um, in a rotation with Winovich and Clowney now, and then you, you add Perry on Winfrey to that inside rush yep. position. I mean, Clowney might get his double digit sacks just based on who he's playing with now. Yeah. Cause Winfrey can get after the passer from that interior position. Yeah. He could play a few, a lot fewer snaps this season and have more sacks. Yeah. We'll see. So we'll see. Hopefully he's back. Hopefully when we're doing this episode, Clowney's back on the team. I'll feel a whole lot better. I think the the defensive line goes from a little bit of a question mark to a, that could be a strength of the defense is the minute we sign him. Mm -hmm. I agree. So um, I want to remind you guys, make sure you're sticking around to the end of the episode. Like I said in the opening, we, in, we interviewed D'Anthony Bell, safety for the Browns. It's at the end of this episode. Make sure you guys stick around for that. It went awesome. He's a super awesome guy. I think you guys are going to love what he had to say. Yeah, that's a kid you're going to want to get to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure, 100%. Um, so this came from the Patreon. They actually texted us this early in the week. I said, hey, I think I'm going to steal that and throw it on the episode because <laughs> um, it kind of interested me. It said, rank your Browns running backs from least likely to most likely to be on the roster come week one because we drafted another running back. So mm -hmm. the, it's kind of a log jam at that position. So the four are Felton, Jerome Ford, Kareem Hunt, Dearness Johnson, and then obviously Chubb's going to be on the roster, but I threw him in here because I actually had somebody arguing with me in the YouTube comments saying they think Chubb's going to be the one that gets traded because – Cream hunts more versatile, even though we just signed him to a three year contract. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Whatever you guys say, whatever. Uh, so uh, if, if it's me, Chubb's obviously on the team. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, he's your most likely, he's my most likely to be on the team. Well, I'll I'm, agree with you there. If I'm going <laughs> second three. Yeah. Okay. So that whoever the YouTuber was, if I'm going second most likely, and I know there's been some talk of this, but I'm saying cream hunts on the team this year. Yes. I've, especially with, I think there's not going to be a suspension of Deshaun Watson this year. I think he plays every game this year. The only way I see Kareem Hunt getting moved before the season starts is if there's like a some crazy running back injuries, you know, in the preseason. You see these guys tear their Achilles or ACLs or whatever. Somebody's then, like throwing us like first round pick or something. Right. Exactly. And maybe like a desperate, you know, maybe Felder Ford steps up to, you know, higher expectations than yep. what we thought they were going to be. Yep. 
Um, but other so, than that, I yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I'm with you. Cream Hunt on the team. Yep. I just think the Browns, especially if they they are getting the feeling that Deshaun's going to play every game this year, they're going for broke. This is the year. You they're got saying, to. They're saying so. To. I don't see them trading Cream Hunt in the year that they're making their big push. Mm-hmm. Um, third, I think would be Felton. I think he's too versatile. I think they they took him um, knowing like that he had a future on this team. Mm-hmm. Was he a six okay. round pick last year? Right. Yeah. Man, Andrew Barry. I tell uh, you what. And then and I think we're going to see him play more receivers. So I don't, I don't even know if I would consider him much of a running back. Yeah. I, I would actually like to see him get the ball handed to him a couple times because I think he's explosive when yeah. he. He gets it. Um, then I'm going to say Jerome Ford because we just drafted him. And I think we drafted him to kind of be on this team in the future, not necessarily for this year. And then I would say least likely to be on the team is going to be Dearness Johnson. And not because of skill, but I think the Browns will are going to look to do right by him. If there's a log jam and there's a team that wants him, he's earned the right to be a guy who's got, at least to be a number two on a team somewhere. I I have read – that Dearness Johnson, like it was a random article, just kind of like a, hey, who do you think is going to not be on the roster this year? And it was him. And they said, due to the two point whatever million that he was owed on the tender, that they just couldn't see the Browns keeping him. For me, I'm like the opposite of that. Put as much depth in the room as you can. Like if I, I'm not saying that I think Chubb or Kareem Hunt is going to get hurt or anything like that. But if you have a legit... I think he's a number one running back just waiting in the wings. Like if he went to the right team, I think he could be a number one there. So I think it's going to be a situation where they keep him on the cheap. And then next year he's just free agent goes, go get paid, man. Cause he's shown us that Thursday night game against Denver. There's been a couple games where he's come in. And all he does is put up what 130 yards and two yeah. touchdowns and the guys a stud. Yeah. We that, don't even that, use him. The Cowboys game. Yes. Was that yeah. last year or the year, before? two years ago, two year years before. ago. Yep. Um, no, uh, like I said, the biggest reason I put him in last is just because I think he, I think he's earned the right to play somewhere. And if teams come knocking, I think the Browns will do right by him. So you think he's getting traded out at some point? I think so. What do you think his market is? It's not going to be very high. I yeah. wouldn't think. It, we might think he's really good, but he, the sample size is so Correct. small. Correct. Yeah, he hasn't shown. He hasn't really proven he's a running the whole back. Thing. Yeah. So I'm going to say maybe fifth or sixth round. Okay, I was that's fair. Fifth would be yeah. awesome. Yep. It'd be high, but and yeah. and if I'm the Browns too, maybe I'm being sentimental, but I'm trading him to a team like I might go to him and be like, Hey, these guys want to trade for you. Are you interested in that? Mm-hmm. I don't think Andrew Beer will do that. He's not much of a sentimental guy, but I don't know. I just feel like Dearness Johnson's earned that here. Yeah. He's put in the work. He's never complained about being a third string running back. Um so if he has a chance if we have a chance to send him somewhere where he can thrive. I think we owe him that. It's just crazy looking at our running back room, though. I mean, you think about some of these other teams in the NFL that struggle to find a guy that can, you know, come into onto the field and actually be consistent and produce yeah. and and do thing, hit the holes the right way, and and everything, make the cuts. We, look at this list we even, have here. Even if you so, the crazy thing is like people like are like, ah, oh, Cream Hunt. He's not really like a legit running back. And I'm like, oh well, do you remember like Kansas City Cream Hunt? Because he yeah. was very legit running back. <laughs> very, there. Legit. very, very legit. So like. Didn't he lead the lead in rushing? Yeah, yep. as a rookie. I picked him up in fantasy as like a joke, like in the third round. And all because somebody got hurt, it was like Spencer Ware or something. There was somebody ahead of him. Yeah. And yeah, I picked yeah. him up, and all he did was put up like a 45er on the first night, that Thursday night, week one game. And I was like, let's go get a championship, baby. Let's do this. <laughs> but no, I I mean, you literally have Chubb and Dearness Johnson are two legit. Like they could be, num- I mean, Chubb is a number one, but both of those are number one. Cream Hunt's so nice out of the back, catching screens and just the pass threat. Uh, the way he runs the ball. Yeah, oh my God, gosh. we're just loaded. So Jerome nice. Jerome Ford's no joke. Yeah, yeah. I, everything I've seen on him, he's nice. I mean, I think they said on PFF that he has all the skills to be an NFL running back, just not to carry the load right now. Well, well don't we, worry about not, that. No, we're not asking to. I think there's a very real shot. It'll be next year's running back room will be Chubb, Ford, Felton. I think John. Yeah, I'm with you on that. That's fair. Gone. Absolutely. Yep. And I think if Ford develops the way they think he will. <sighs> We're not, I mean, I, I'm not going to say we're not missing much by losing Cream Hunt, because especially because he's so great catching the ball mm-hmm. on the backfield, but we stay pretty darn explosive with that running yeah. back room. Hey, Browns fans, the NBA playoff action is nonstop at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. This week, new customers can bet just $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets if they do. If you're looking to turn a small bet into a big payday during the NBA playoffs with DraftKings same-day parlays, you can do just that. Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets like 
which team will win, total threes made, total rebounds, and more, and boom, you have a shot at an even bigger payout. Right now, all customers can place a same-game parlay with three or more legs and get a free bet back up to $25 if one leg doesn't hit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, use promo code TPPN, bet $5 on any NBA team to win their game, and get $150 in free bets if they do. That's promo code TPPN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Well, that was just a little fun thing that the Patreon threw us. Again, if you want to talk to us in our free time, join the dogs.com, become an official Patreon member. So lastly, that's going to take us to a fan voicemail before we get into our interview with D'Anthony Bell. Yeah, so this is from the Brown Tiger on YouTube. And it, if I remember the voicemail before I play it here, he talks about some of the stuff we've already hit on, but I'll just play it and then we can we can talk about it. What's up, dogs? This is your favorite fan, the Brown Tiger again. And I just wanted to say what an amazing draft the Browns had for not having a first for the next three years. What an amazing uh, draft we had. Um, And to get Perry on Winfrey in the fourth round is absolutely phenomenal. I love the energy he brings to the, to the dogs. And I I just think everybody's going to feed off of that. Um, First things first though, I wanted to say is that it doesn't matter about David Bell um, not being, you know, the superstar wide receiver that everybody thinks of. I wanted to give you a little synopsis of who Watson is as well. He makes everybody around him better. All right. He takes an average wide receiver or an average running back and makes them look elite because that's the kind of quarterback Watson is. If you have a really good quarterback like Watson, they will make your wide receivers and running backs look absolutely insane elite. And that is why Watson is so much better than Baker Mayfield. Go dogs. Where do we want to start there? I <laughs> well, felt like there's a lot of touching points there. He threw there. a lot in there, yeah. yeah. I think that w- w- the first thing he said, getting Perry on Winfrey in the yes. fourth round, that's highway robbery. It's, Can, it's just Andrew Barry being Andrew Barry all over again. We touched on it last week in our draft recap episode. And, I, and I'm not trying to, you know, promote another show but again i watched building the browns last night and they even kind of talked about nobody thought he was going to be available in the fourth round no, second round pick you know what i mean nobody mm, thought yeah. that when they had the third pick on day three they, there was the in no scenario had winfrey still being on the board and then they were able to get him so it's just even the browns were like holy cow <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched that interview i haven't even really got to talk to you guys about that interview no. i watched that interview and i go man Let's get that guy a jersey number so I can go on NFL shop right now. <laughs> we need that is I literally watched that and I've never been so excited for like an interview like that, a draft day interview. And the guy's talking about no coffee needed. I woke up like this. I'm, you know, and I'm just like, this is somebody we can rally around. This is the kind of guy that's gonna show up in Cleveland and Cleveland fans will absolutely embrace that blue collar, gritty. This is our guy. Mm-hmm. This is very exciting. Yeah. Uh, the I just think there's Nobody's going to outwork him. No. Just, I just got that sense like he just wakes up in the morning. Like he just sleeps on, on a bench. <laughs> and like before he gets up, he just sort of like knocks out 225 a few times just to get his day started. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the guy is just, uh, he's a freak. Um, his energy in, he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. Because, you know, oh. he thought he should have went way sooner. Yeah. So he's he going to come in ready to eat. That He said in his interview, he's like, you know, I needed this. This is a wake up call to me. Like to me, I'm like, oh man, please don't give this guy a wake up call. Oh my <laughs> God. This guy, you know, and just all the talk about like we're on first down, second down, third down, we're coming for that ball. Like I just, I love it. And he's, you know, he said he's like one of his best friends is Greg Newsome. It's crazy. You're, you got a guy on the roster that can, you know, show you the ropes. I'm excited for that kid. And the, in, my, in my life, the Browns have never really had an interior pass rusher. You know, we last couple of seasons we've been talking, well, let's move Miles inside so mm-hmm. we can, you know, we shouldn't have to, to do that. You know, yeah. TJ Watt doesn't play nose guard ever. Yeah. You know, he, he's an edge rusher. Miles Garrett should get to, you know, play on the edge where he's comfortable. Well, now we have a guy who can get after the passer mm-hmm. from that in, interior position. Um, we've never had anything like that. Nope. And imagine you can't double Miles on the edge because you got a guy who can get after the pass rusher up the middle. <laughs> Not good. I mean, just not to go to the total extreme, but just think about how 
impactful Aaron Donald is from the interior. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, you, it just makes such a difference. Yeah. And if this guy can be even a sliver of Aaron Donald. I was going to say, Aaron Donald, go. man. I mean, Aaron Donald is so... In revitalized <laughs> Von Miller. I mean, he just got Von Miller a $100 million contract. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because Von Miller looked like he was on the decline, goes to the Rams, mm -hmm. plays with Donald, starts getting all the single coverage on the outside, single blocking, Yep. and then wins a the Super Bowl and now gets a $100 million contract, even though he's on the wrong side of 30. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this guy... If he, if he plays as well as he talks, Miles Garrett's going to feast. Clowney, hopefully. Mm -hmm. feast. It's going to be, like I said, we signed Clowney. This defensive line goes from a question mark to uh, a spot of strength on this team in an instant. All of a sudden, it's Andrew Barry knew what he was doing all along. <laughs> Never stop preaching that. Um, I The other thing he said, the Brown Tiger dude, he said he was talking about, you know, like David Bell, the worries about like having a superstar. Yeah, he's 100% right. You think Will Fuller is an elite superstar? No. Nope. Me personally, I don't. What's Will Fuller done since Deshaun no. quit playing? Don't get me wrong. Brandon Cooks, nice receiver. Really, really nice receiver. Super. He's just, been he's, productive everywhere yeah, he goes. Yeah. But he's yeah. not a superstar. Not a superstar. Right. right. Watson makes those guys kind of look like superstars. No, like Hopkins. Hopkins is a superstar. Yeah. Well, Hopkins, now we know why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, just don't get caught. Uh, well, and, and we can say David Bell wasn't a superstar, but the dude is the first team All-American. Yeah. yeah. You look at almost, his numbers. And almost 3,000 yeah. yards receiving yeah. in his career. Mm -hmm. I mean, the dude was as close to as a superstar in college as he can get. Now, we got to see how that translates to the NFL, but I watched the guy play in college. He was a star. Yeah. Everybody knew he was getting the ball for Purdue. Who else? Name me another Purdue player. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And let's let's not sit here and act like a you know Deshaun Watson's only going to elevate these receivers. I mean, he he could unlock the potential in these receivers. Yeah. I mean, DPJ might not just get elevated; he might actually ascend. You yeah, know what I mean? to, to where later in his career, he's a he's an elite receiver with somebody else. DPJ could have the season this year that we thought he was going to have last year. Yeah, yeah, I I'm planning on that now. Yeah, you know, we we thought he was going to make that huge leap, and then. You know, it didn't happen for uh, for whatever reasons. <laughs> okay, you know, that's we're not, not going to be the dead horse. <laughs> but um, no, I think DPJ. I think Schwartz. He he's been putting in work. I don't know. I just think this offense, and I've I've said it before. I think Chubb Chubb could lead the league in rushing now. Yeah. Even with splitting carries, I think he, there's a chance he's going to uh, lead the league in rushing. He was second in the league last year, and everybody knew what we were going to try to do. And he missed games. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's crazy to me, like, how – and it's it hurts because I felt like we got super predictable last year on offense to the point where we had to throw the ball because we couldn't run it at all because they just put everybody mm -hmm. in the box. Yeah, you hear team guys last year saying uh, we were throwing the ball too much and we weren't trying to run it with Chubb. Well, we when couldn't. The, <laughs> we, couldn't. we couldn't. We couldn't. It doesn't matter how good your line is. or how, yeah. There's only five linemen. There's 11 defenders, and if they all know where the ball's going, it's going to make it really difficult to run the ball. Yeah. I think, I mean, you imagine you put Deshaun in the shotgun next to Nick Chubb and you run a read option. Oh, my. You yeah, run an RPO way. where he fakes the hand, he, he pulls it, and then all of a sudden he hits Amari Cooper on a quick slant. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or Schwartz. Yeah. yeah. Gone. Yeah, it's just the, the possibilities for this offense. And he knows Stefanski he's just – salivating he, he, he got to the playbook and he went well this is where i had to stop the last two years <laughs> let's see what's in the and rest then, of this what's in the last 20 pages i didn't get to call oh yeah. i forgot this was a good play oh yeah. this was a good one too i think you know he's just chomping at the bit um so i think the season is going to be it has a chance to be special i'm trying to temper expectations because every time i get high on the browns they let me down and then every time i'm low on the browns that's when we exceed expectations but i think this year has a shot to be Best season of our lives. Oh, completely. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. I don't want to be that guy that does that too, like that jinxes us and says, hey, this might be it. <laughs> uh, so I'll just keep my mouth shut. You already know what I think. But <laughs> um, it is crazy. It's We're, we're very close. Mm -hmm. This could be it. Awesome. Anything else we need to talk about? Hmm. I don't think so. Awesome. Well, hey, if you guys want to get your thoughts on the show, uh, thedogspodcast.com, leave us a voicemail. Uh, we'll play your your voicemail on the show. And uh, right after this break, we will be back with D'Anthony Bell, safety for the Browns. Stay tuned. It's an awesome interview. He's a great kid. Make sure you check it out.
Hey, what's up, Browns fans? Just want to take a quick break in the action here to let you know that spring, thank God, is finally here. And with spring, with that sunshine, with the warmer weather, that means you're breaking out your grills. And if you're breaking out your grills, there's nothing better to throw on those puppies than Omaha Steaks. Omaha Steaks are absolutely amazing. If you guys have never tried Omaha Steaks or had these things, I I don't know what to tell you. You're missing out. You have got to give them a try. They make obviously steaks, but so they, they have so much more food, you know, chicken, they have uh, shrimp and, and all kinds of other things, pork chops. It's unbelievable what these guys have. Uh, Omaha steaks make it easy to stock up on all your grilling favorites. If you visit right now, omahasteaks.com and if you type in dogs, D-A-W-G-S into the search bar and make sure you order the spring grill pack today. Okay. You guys that it's on sale right now with the code dogs, you're actually going to save over 50% on your order. Plus you'll get four Omaha steaks, burgers and four boneless chicken chicken breasts free with your order 50% off plus four Omaha steak burgers and four boneless chicken breasts free. That, I mean, you guys, you can't beat this deal. The spring grill pack includes four butchers cut filet mignons, four boneless pork chops, four boneless chicken breasts, four gourmet jumbo franks, one package of all beef meatballs, four caramel apple tartlets, delicious, and one jar of Omaha steak seasoning. And then you also get the four Omaha steak burgers and the four boneless chicken breasts for free, plus the 50% off. You can't beat this deal. Get yourself the spring grill pack today from Omaha steaks. You will not regret it. So make sure you don't miss out on this offer. It's amazing. OmahaSteaks.com. Enter in dogs in the search bar. Get out there and grill, baby, grill. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for being here with us. As promised earlier in the episode, we have a very special guest in the studio today. Brown Safety DeAnthony Bell joins us for the first time ever on the Dogs Podcast, a player interview. DeAnthony, it's super awesome having you here. We really appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here with us. Yeah, I thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. I'm blessed to be here. Uh, it's, it's super exciting um, time for you. Picked up by the Browns. Um, you know, I just kind of wanted to ask why Cleveland. Uh, do you know much about Joe Wood's scheme, and, and how excited are you just to be a part of the Dog Pound? We kind of have a, a rich tradition in Cleveland of the Dog Pound, and the fans are crazy. And how excited are you to join that? Uh, I'm, I'm very excited. And what made me go with Cleveland was uh, I was at the East West Shrine game with Coach Howard, the safety coach. So me and him built a, a real close relationship. So it, it felt like home, you know, and it was like, hey, we want you here. I'm like, hey, that's just, it's like continuing work that I already had, had started at the East West Shrine. So it was just it was, it was amazing to get that call. How excited are you to, to join a safety room? There with some guys who've played it at a pretty high caliber in the NFL. Some guys you get to play with, uh, Johnson, Delpit, uh, Harrison. So you're going to get to learn and play with some guys who've played at a pretty high level in this league. Uh, I think that's that's the best part about it. You know, I get to come in and, and have some guys that I can look forward to and look and talk to and soak it up like a sponge. You know, when I got those concerns about being there or some problems or any questions, I can ask those guys because they've been in my situation before. So I think it's just it's even better having those guys in the room where I can have somebody to talk to and ask questions. That's awesome, man. Uh, so the draft came and went. How do you keep the like the woe is me mentality from creeping in and you turn it into a positive going forward? Like, does it give you a chip on your shoulder to kind of prove to teams what they missed out on uh, and what the Browns are going to get out of you? Oh, yeah, definitely. I definitely got a, a big chip on my shoulder. I think what round three it was probably it was probably like in the middle. I mean, it was like day three. It was in the middle of the draft, and I was outside working out. You know, I was like, hey, you know, all these teams done past me, so <laughs> I got to go get it in. Like, I got to work out because, you know, I was feeling some type of way. But I think it just it just helped me. It's motiv- it motivated me to do better and come in and, you know, show everybody what I can do. That's awesome. I mean, that's the, I think that's the kind of mentality you have to have. I know, like, if there was a podcast draft and I didn't get picked, I'd be down <laughs> in the dumps. So for, for you to turn that into a positive, I mean, that just shows a lot about your character and the work you're willing to put in. Yeah. We're excited to see that on the field with the Browns. Um, this question actually comes from one of our Patreon members. He asked, uh, who's your favorite player to watch in the NFL, and do you kind of model your game off of anyone? Uh, favorite player to watch in the NFL? I would probably say Buda Baker because I like I like his mentality to get to the ball. You know, I like his uh, his willingness. He got a big heart. You know, he ain't the biggest player, but his heart shows a lot when it comes to his game. And as far as modeling my game, I wouldn't say I model my game after just one person, but I, I watch so many different safeties. So I like, you know, I like Derwin James because he's a bigger safety, kind of like myself. We're around the same height, size, 
Uh, I like Buddha because of his mentality. Uh, I like Marlon Humphrey. I like his ball skills and being able to get the ball out. You know, I, I watch a lot of people, Ed Reed. I like his ball skills as well. You know, I watch Bob Sanders, you know, <laughs> back back in the day, the Colts, Bob Sanders. You know, I like his willingness to hit. So I just I watch a lot of different people try to take a lot of different things to help my game out. That's awesome. Speaking of, you know, guys who are willing to come up into the box and hit, you actually have the nickname Hitman. And that goes back to your days in college. Why don't you kind of tell us how you got that nickname, how it's followed you, and, uh, you know, just kind of how you got that. Well, I was at uh, Butler Community College, and uh, we was playing Ellsworth. I remember, I remember this game like it was yesterday. So we were playing <laughs> Ellsworth, and uh, <laughs> I was a backside safety, and uh, a guy ran a post. And I, I kind of I hit him so hard, like I drilled him. And then after that, all my teammates just called me Hitman. And then when I got to West Florida, I kept on making those big hits. And then the name just stuck with me. It just kept going. Uh, it's continuing now. That's awesome. I saw you were, what, the first player from your team or something to make the NFLPA All-Star game. Definitely what was that there. like going from playing like a Division two, and then you go to this NFLPA game, you're playing against some of these guys from these larger programs. How did that kind of go? And what was your mentality throughout that process? First, first off, it was it was a big blessing to me because I was like, you know, being the first one from that from that school is a, a, a huge blessing. Uh, I wasn't too much nervous going in because you know I came from a junior college and a lot of those kids they transfer out and go to junior colleges. So I played a lot of higher level guys and I'm I, I feel like I'm a higher level guy myself. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, I, I just couldn't go D one due to grades and stuff. But when I got there, I felt comfortable. You know, at the NFLPA, nobody really caught a ball on me. Nobody really showed me none that I felt like I couldn't handle. So. I feel like, you know, when I came in, I'm like, hey, they put their jersey on the same way I do. So they got to show me that they better than me. So <laughs> No, that's, that's, that's great. That's a good mentality right yeah. there. Yep. Um, a lot of times the route to making the final roster is on special teams. Do you think experience being a return man as well as your other special teams duties in the past, does it kind of give you a leg up on the competition on some of the other guys trying to make the team with the Browns? Definitely. I would say so. I think because, you know, as far as my team at West Florida, I was on every special team, you know, and – that was that was as well as being a starter. So I was a starter and start on every special team. And I think that's one of the things that I bring to the Browns that will help us out a lot is being able to be a dog on special teams as well, <laughs> not just on the field and on the defensive side. So I feel like I got the willing and, and, and uh, the grit to get on special teams and make plays. That's awesome. And I think that gives you a huge leg up on a lot of people. You know, some of these guys, they probably never even played special teams, maybe – since high school. Right. So for you to right. come in and, and be well-versed, do you have a preference? Do you prefer kickoff team laying the wood or do you like returning the kicks? What do you kind of prefer? Hey, I, I kind of like both. I definitely like both, but <laughs> I would probably say kickoff because I like hitting for sure. <laughs> well, you didn't get your nickname for nothing. Um, <laughs> so I don't know how well you know like Browns, but they're, they're, their fan base is global. They have Browns backers clubs literally all over the world. Um, I'm figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, literally all over the world, from the UK all the way up to Canada. This question actually comes from the president of the Ottawa Browns backers up in Canada. He asked, what was your best college moment, and what do you think you bring to the Browns secondary? Um, my best college moment, I would probably say winning the national championship with the oh, University of West Florida. So that, that was a huge accomplishment. I actually got my ring beside me because I was just wearing it. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was a huge accomplishment, you know, just just going going there my first year in and becoming the team captain and ending up winning the uh, winning the championship was a huge moment. And uh, the thing that I say I bring to the Browns is probably just like I said before, being, being able to be that player that had a, that that chip on his shoulder that's willing to get on whatever you put him on and make a play. You know, I feel like whoever in front of me, they got they got to come with it because I'm, I'm willing to bring it. You know, what I'm saying I'm willing to put in all the work off the field and on the field. To, to make it happen on special teams for sure. Awesome. I actually wanted to go back to your, you know, the national championship in college and you being a team captain, you te first year on the team coming to a team that had just won the national championship, correct? No, they had just went, but they lost. They lost. Okay. But a, a, a team that, I mean, had been to the big game and it's your first year on the team and you managed to become a captain first year. How, how did you do that? And I mean, how did you inspire the guys to, to vote for you to be a captain your first year on a team like that? Uh, I think I just came in with, you know, the mentality of, you know, showing everybody what I can do, you know, just proving myself as far on the field. I wasn't too much vocal because I I, they, I felt like they already had those guys that were vocal that was already there previously. So just coming in, putting in the hard work and showing everybody that during practice, I'm going full speed during practice. You know, you got to beat me during practice. I treat practice like a game. So just seeing them seeing me putting in that work and uh, coming to practice with, with all that mentality and all that energy, they're like, hey, this is a guy that I want to play beside me. This is somebody that 
I feel like I could trust when it comes down to the last play. So it kind of helped me out. That's awesome. You're getting me kind of fired up to do the yeah. rest of this podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so then I, what would you say is your biggest strength in the secondary, which I guess you've kind of touched on this already. And then is there anything you're looking to focus on improving in your game as you're heading into the off season program with the Browns? Yeah, I think um, my strengths would probably be getting to the ball. You know, I feel like I, I pride myself on getting to the ball and being around the ball and also tackling. I feel like I'm, um, I'm a relentless tackler. Like I, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make that tackle. And as far as weakness, I think I need to work on as far as uh, just pad level when backpedaling, coming out of breaks, those type of things, just small things that are technique things that I can learn from the guys that are pre already there. You know, they can teach me some small tip that will help somebody like myself, you know, being a taller guy and coming out of breaks, being in, in the backpedal. So those are some things I need to work on. I was going to say, tackling's been huge as far as the defense for the Browns, at least the last couple seasons. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody they bring in seems to be – you know, pretty good at tackling. So with you having that trait down pat being the hit man, that's, it's pretty good for you. Yes, sir. That's going to be awesome. All right, man. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to go away from some football questions for you, man. Right. I'm going to keep, I'm gonna make it real easy. So first thing, what do you, what are you listening to, man? What's in the iPod or like, what's the uh, music you listen to in the locker room when you're ready to just get hyped up or anything like that? Uh, a hyped up song I'll probably play is probably, Vice versa by Pastor Troy. Okay. Uh, rapper out of Georgia. Yeah. Okay. That gets me fired up. Or well, I'm listening to some Lil Boosie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Lil Boosie yeah. going to get me fired up. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what I'm listening to before a game. Okay. And then uh, I guess the other thing I was going to ask about, man, so you got the Hitman nickname. They got a Hitman game series. What What are you playing on? Xbox, PlayStation? What are, What games are you playing? You Are you doing any gaming at all? Yeah, yeah, I play on P5. I used okay. to play on Warzone with a lot of my friends, a lot of my teammates and stuff. So we be on Warzone a lot. Oh, that's a that's a Blake Renneker thing right I'm there. I'm going to have to get your game attack. <laughs> and I, like, right. I love that Warzone life. Right. <laughs> yeah, the only the only other question outside of football that I was just curious is, like, are you a, are you a superhero fan? Do you do the Marvel, DC kind of movies, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm big on movies. I watch a lot of different movies in Marvel. And my mom loved Marvel. Okay, well, <laughs> who's your favorite? Which one's your favorite? My favorite got to be Superman. Okay. Like, gotta, okay. Go Superman. You know, I just feel like he's the one that's like really has superpowers. You know, when it comes down. <laughs> so, yeah, Superman just was always super cool to me. And I used to always watch him with my mom. And I think back then my favorite was like X-Men. I used to. Oh, love yeah. Like, you know, Ooh, yeah. He had the coming out the fist. I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he amazing. So I used to love that. I just checked out that uh, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness movie the other day. So if you haven't had it, you got to check that out. It's pretty good. I haven't seen it yet. I want us to go see uh, Morbius that just came out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's a different universe, too. I'm interested to see how it all ties in. Definitely. <laughs> but uh, awesome, man. Well, hey, we don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you got a busy schedule, workouts, all that good stuff. Yep. Again, we really appreciate you being here with us. First ever player interview on the Dogs podcast. Um, you helped make history for us. Good luck making the Browns team this year. You're, uh, we're super excited to watch you yep. throughout camp and everything. And no matter what happens, you got three lifelong fans here at the I'm, Dogs Podcast. Yeah, right. I'm, root, I'm rooting big time for you, man. You sound like you have a really good head on your shoulders. You keep saying you're blessed in your position, man. I'm, and I'm rooting for you. You got a fan, man. You got three of them. Thank you so much. I got to get my mom on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, bring, yeah, her yeah. On, bring her on. Bring her on. Yeah, come on the podcast. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on, come on. <laughs> Look, she's like, nah. <laughs> Showbiz ain't for everybody. Hey. 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 How we doing? What's up, Mom? Uh, happy Mother's Day. Happy Absolutely. Late Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, I got my girlfriend sitting right here too. She ain't gonna get in the camera. Oh, no. <laughs> that sounds like my wife, man. My wife is not not getting on the camera either. No. <laughs> yeah, she's like, uh uh. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate y'all, man. Thank yeah. you so much. Good man. luck, man. For yeah, real. That's luck, awesome, man. bro. Yep. Yeah, and you have a great day. And again, well, maybe if we're up at training camp, we'll bump into you. Yes, sir. Y'all be blessed. Thank you. You too, you too right, man. You too. Thank you. Once again, we want to thank the Anthony Bell for being here with us today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that conversation. He's a great kid, great head on his shoulders. We're very excited to see what he does with the Browns in camp. Um, if you want to get your voicemail, your answers on the show, uh, thedogspodcast.com, tap leave voicemail. If you want extra content, head to jointhedogs.com, become an official Patreon member. We're going to have an After Hours episode coming up for that. Uh, game day threads, fantasy leagues, all that good stuff. Um, we Again, thank you for being here with us. The show's been doing really well lately, and we owe that all to you guys. So so thank you for checking us out uh, and thanks for being a part of this. Uh, we were able to get a player on the show for the first time ever and 
we don't do that if there's only 10 people listening that's right so we, uh, we owe this all to you guys so we really appreciate it and we will see you guys all next week Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast and become an official Dog Pack member and join the dogs.com.